verse 11 through 12, we have the test score. Let's read 11 and 12 again. And the angel of the Lord called out unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. May I suggest to you that God has a very intimate concern about what it is in our lives that's off limits to him. He, he wants to know whatever it is that we have that he can't have. I, I'm afraid that he's aware that most of us have that same kind of relationship with him that those two sisters had. There were two sisters who grew up together and one moved and the other one went to, to visit her. She said, all right, I'm glad to have you. She said, my house is your house. She said, uh, I, I got to work in the morning, but uh, you'll be fine. So uh, the next morning comes, the sister goes to work, and uh, the other sister awakens. And when she awakens, she says, I'm going to go to the kitchen and have some breakfast. When she gets to the kitchen, she finds, to her surprise, there was a lock on the refrigerator door. So she said, okay, oversight, oversight. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and take a nice hot bath. So she goes on her way to take a nice hot bath, and when she gets to the bathroom door, again, to her surprise, there's a lock on the door. A big concern, but she says, uh, trying to be optimistic, she says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go downstairs and watch that big screen television. So she goes downstairs to look at the big screen television, and once again, to her surprise, there's a lock on the family door. It wasn't long before she discovered that the relationship she had with her sister was a relationship with restrictions. And there are many believers who have that same kind of relationship with God. We love him so much, but there's so much that's off limits to him. And the Lord has major concerns about what we have that he can't have. As a matter of fact, may I suggest that God looks at what we give him, not so much always with what we offer, but with what we refuse to share. You remember that lady who came and gave two mites and Jesus set over against the treasury and when the offering was over, the Lord said, she gave more than everybody. How could she give more than everybody when there were rich people who dumped in much? Uh, she gave more because the Lord determines my giving not by what I put in, but by what I keep back. She gave all she had. And so now he says, now I know that you fear God, seeing you did not keep from me your only son, Isaac. Abraham passed the test. But, 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 but now let's not just presume that we know the test. Let's review the test. Here's the test. Abraham is old and so is his wife. God comes to them at that old age and he says, I know Sarah is barren, but Sarah is going to have a baby. Abraham tells Sarah that God says, you're going to have a baby. They communicate that, but years go by. Both getting older, but no baby. No baby. Sarah says, Abraham, what God really meant was, he wants you to lie with my bondwoman, Haggai. Abraham said, well, if that's the will of God. He said, if that's what God wants, he said, now you sure before I go in there, huh? I'm willing to take one for the team. And so Abraham goes in to lie with Haggai and she gets pregnant, gives birth to Ishmael. But God says, that ain't what I say. He's not the son of promise. Years go by. As a matter of fact, 25 years and, and Sarah is 90 years old and Abraham is 100. And she says, baby, I'm pregnant. And so this old woman has a baby and God allows Abraham to get attached to him. And, and waits some 20 plus years later and turns around and says, now give him back. Uh, 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 go to a mountain where I'll show you. Uh, don't worry about directions. I'm going to give you a divine GPS. 
And when you get there, you'll know you're there. And so Abraham gets his son. Notice what he does. He gets his son, he gets his servant, and he gets his supplies. But notice who he didn't get. He didn't get Sarah. He got his son, his servant, and his supplies. Because God says, offer your son as a burnt offering. Go kill your son, set him on fire, and offer him to me. Abraham got his son, his servant, and his supplies. But he didn't say anything to Sarah. Y'all know why, huh? There'll be more verses in chapter 22. But now watch this. I'm almost there. He goes to the place, tells the servants, stay here while me and the lad go yonder and worship. And we will return. And he goes up there and he's got Isaac on the altar. He's got the knife cocked back and he's on the downswing. And the angel says, Abraham, Abraham, it was just a test. Don't kill him because God says, now I know how you feel about me. Because you would not withhold your only son from me. Now, young people, these are factual accounts in this Bible. Don't let anyone tell you these are stories. Now, watch this. That's the account. And since you know all about the account in the Bible, let me give you three quick main ideas to help you understand giving God your best. Main idea number one. There are three levels of giving. Let the church say levels. Well, now, let's look at the levels. The first level, that's the most obvious one. That is the level that Abraham was willing to give on. Abraham was willing to give Isaac. Isaac belonged to him, but even though he loved Isaac, he was willing to give what belonged. He was willing to give substance. Uh, uh, but may I suggest to you that there's a greater level of giving in this text? And the greater level is not the level that Abraham was willing to give on, but the level that Isaac was willing to give on. Aha! Most folks miss that. One, because when you think about Abraham and Isaac, you think about a grown man and a little baby boy. But by now, Abraham is 125. Isaac is a 25-year-old young man. And there's no way that this old man can force this young man to lay down and let me kill you. And that's why Isaac is a type of Christ. Because Isaac was willingly surrendered to, his, to the will of his father. And was willing to lay down his own life on Mount Moriah. Isaac was willing to give self. But there's another level. And it's the third level. And it's the level of the servants. In verse 5, he told the servants, y'all stay here. I'm going up with the boy and worship. Now, 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 now why did he leave the servants down there? Because they represent another level. They represent the level of giving that folks that watch you give and don't understand why, and they'll try to talk you out of it. The reason he didn't take the servants on the mountain because had the servants seen him tie up his son and try to kill him, they would have tried to stop him. And there are some folks who can't understand why we give on the level we give on. But the question is, uh, today is, what level are you on? Y'all heard about the farm animals, didn't you? Who wanted to give their boss a breakfast? Henrietta. Henrietta the hen was in charge. Henrietta said, I'm going to bring some eggs. She looked at Carl. She said, Carl, we're going to need some milk. She looked over at Paul the pig. She said, Paul, we're going to need some bacon. Paul said, like Shanae, hold up. Hold up. He said, Henrietta? All you got to do is lay eggs. He said, Carl, all they got to do is yank on you and you're going to give some milk. He said, but for me to give bacon, I got to sacrifice. He said, why don't we change to a dinner menu? He said, Henrietta, you bring some fried chicken. Carl, you bring a steak. And if y'all bring fried chicken and steak, I'll bring a pork chop. <laughs> but, but let's everybody give on the same level. I don't know where your level is, but God wants your best. And can I tell you, whatever your level is, if when you give the best of your service, your service, 
he'll understand and he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. So we've had main idea number one. Three levels of giving. But now in the text, we have main idea number two. There must be loyalty in giving. Derived from verses 6, 9 through 12. Minister DeLong, where did you see loyalty? Well, I saw loyalty because there's no way you can convince me that Abraham, even though he obeyed, there's no way you can convince me he was happy about it. Now, 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 who's happy about killing their son? The son of promise at that. He has to walk 50 miles before he gets to the mountain. A three-day journey. He's walking three days. He's got his son, servant, and supplies. Knowing all along that he's got to kill his son. Now, now, there's no way you can make me think he was happy about it. Which is to suggest that sometimes when we're giving God our best, we got to get out of our comfort zone. That means sometimes giving God our best, we got to be so loyal to God that we are more loyal to him than we are to ourselves. But, but, now, but now watch this. So he gets to the mountain. He gets to the place and he tells his servants, y'all stay here. Me and the lad. Now watch the terminology. We going to worship and we're going to return. Now, now, now. That put me in a corner. Because if you're going to kill him, and you know you're going to kill him, how are we coming back? But first of all, there's a key word. It says, we're going to worship. He says, we're going up the mountain, just me and the lad, to worship. Strange thing about it. They're going up there to worship, but there's no children and youth choir on the hill. They're going up to worship, but there's no Louis Rosenthal or one of these fine ministers up there with a Bible. They're going up to worship, but there's no royal family called D. McKinney First Baptist Church or congregation up there waiting on them. Which tells me to tell somebody that worship is never about what you come to get. It's about what you bring. Everybody talking about what you come to get. What did you bring the Lord? Did you bring him a hallelujah? Did you bring him a thank you? What did you bring the Lord? Now watch this. On the way up the hill to worship. Now another thing that backed me into a corner was that I understand that praise and worship are similar but not synonymous. You see, we praise God for his attributes. That is for who he is. That's why I can always praise him. Because he's always who he is. If I'm broke, he's who he is. If I'm sick, he's who he is. If I'm out of a job, he's who he is. That's why the Bible says from the rising of the sun, I wish I had some Bible readers in here, the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy to be praised. But whereas I praise God for his attributes, I worship him for his activity. Uh, uh, now watch. But if you don't know who he is, <laughs> you don't recognize what he's doing. That's why some folks don't worship God because they're so busy patting themselves on the back for something they don't deserve credit for. But hold on, minister. You say we worship God for his activity? Well, what had God done for Abraham? He's about to kill his son. So how active has God been? Now, 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 you ain't paying attention. You see, because God had done something. You see, watch this. Just because you're going through now, don't forget what he's already done. Don't forget who gave you the boy in the first place. But don't forget who provided you a son when your wife couldn't. Uh, don't forget who worked a miracle in the first place. So watch this. Number one, God has already provided. But then watch this. Number two, God has made a promise. Somebody here right now is between provision and promise. That means he's already done some things, but you're still waiting on him to do some things. Now, 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 now that explains why Abraham did what he did. What did he do? He said, all right, Lord. I'm going to kill Isaac. 
He said, I don't like it, but I'm going to do it. He said, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to obey you. But I'm going to stand right here. After I kill him, I'm going to stand right here and watch you bring him right back up. So, so why was he so confident? Uh, so sure, because in Genesis chapter 12, God said, Abraham, I'm going to bless your seed. And Abraham said, if my seed is going to be blessed, Isaac's got to live. Because if there's no Isaac, there will be no Jacob. And Abraham says, I can't explain it, but I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. And so with tears in his eyes, he takes that knife and he gets ready to kill his son. And he's waiting on God to keep his word. Sometimes you got to be more loyal. When I think of worship, I think of, and I think of God's activity. I'm reminded of a story I heard when Nelson Mandela had been in prison for some 27 years. And then he was released and then elected president. South Africa. Uh, they had an installation ceremony for him, an inaugural, and who's who from all over the nation was present. It was carried by the BBC, the British Broadcasting Channel. And as they carried that telecast, uh, they saw something remarkable. While they were on the inside, uh, uh, with all of the who's who of all the great people from around the world, on the outside were the natives of South Africa. They had not been invited, but they showed up. And, and they didn't come quietly. They showed up doing a dance called a toy toy. They showed up dancing and making noise. Now, I know y'all gonna laugh at me, but I gotta show you something. They showed up the When they showed up, they showed up being noisy. There was a certain reporter who got upset. He said it's out of order. I don't believe they're keeping up all this noise. We're trying to have a dignified ceremony and they're out here keeping up all this fuss. And by the time he was complaining, Nelson Mandela was walking up. He said, Mr. President, may I have a word with you? He said, we're trying to have a ceremony for you and the natives are out there trying to steal the show. Doing all this dancing and stomping. Mandela said, oh, no, no. That dance is called a toy toy. He said, excuse me. <laughs> now, 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 about the time the reporter is living. Yeah. He, but, but by that time Mandela walks off, up walks Bishop Tutu. Yeah. He said, here comes the elder statesman. Surely he will be, have more sense and substance about this. He, he said, say, Bishop Tutu, may I have a word with you? He said, we're trying to have a ceremony, but yet the natives are out here making all this noise. He said, can you help me with this? Tutu said, my brother, let me tell you. He said, my brother, that dance is called the toy toy. He said, we do the toy toy because that's the way we worship God. He said, we worship God because God has been good. He said, you see Nelson over there? They used to call him prisoner. Now they call him president. He said, they used to call me little black boy, but now they call me bishop. He said, when I think of goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, don't you say, y'all chicken to work, work, chicken to work, work. Now, 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 you might not be able to do the toy toy, but if God has been good to you, you ought to be able to raise your hand. You ought to at least be able to run around and celebrate. You may not be able to do the toy toy. You ought to be able to do the joy joy. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. So in main idea number one, there were three levels of giving. In main idea number two, there must be loyalty in giving. But third and finally, in main idea number three, 
there's a lesson in giving. Derived from verse 7 to 8, 13 to 14. They're on the mountain. On their way up the hill. And because they've done this before, Isaac takes inventory. Let's read verse 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father? And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where? But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? You know, not, not that, that suggests that father and son had been to church before. That suggests that this wasn't the first time that family was worshiping together. He said, Daddy, normally we don't go before God without bringing something to give God. Y'all ready for the lesson? Y'all ready for this? Verse 8. Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. That's the lesson today. Can I tell you, I don't care what it is that you need, God is able to provide it. Uh, uh, when you understand who God is and you value him in worship and you surrender and you are a good steward, the Lord will provide. Let me close by telling you a story about a little boy whose mother was ill and she sent her son to church. She said to him, son... I'm unable to go today, but I want you to take my offering. She gave the boy a $50 bill. She said, I want you to pay $20 for my tithes and $10 for my offering. And she said, bring me my $20 change. A $50 bill, $20 for my tithes, $10 for my offering, and bring me my $20 change. And then she said, here's $10, put that in for yourself. That boy, that boy, that boy went to church that Sunday, and he went to TMFBC. And, all, and of all things, because this doesn't happen often, Pastor Louis Rosenthal was preaching on giving. And, and Pastor Rosenthal, you know how convincing he can be, how convicting the word that God gives him can be. Before that boy knew it, he put the whole 50 and the 10. But Mary Culberson gave him a ride to the house. And on the way to the house, they had conversation. And he asked him about his grades. But when the boy finally made it home, he was so excited about what had happened at church. And about the, what the pastor had preached. And the promises from the word of God. He rushed in trying to tell mama. He said, mama, mama, had a good time. Mama said, baby, I don't mind hearing that. But what? Y'all know how mamas be acting. Where is my change? He, he said, Mama, hold on. I'm trying to tell you something, Mama. Mama, we had a good time. He said, the, the, the children choir sang and the pastor preached. She said, baby, that's good. But give me my change. Uh, finally, he said, Mama, I, I got to admit something to you. He said, Mama, Pastor Rosenthal preached on giving. And before I knew it, I gave everything I had. She said, baby... Why would you do that? She said, you know we're struggling. You know we're having a hard time making ends meet. Why? He said, hold on, mama. Hold, hear me out. Hear me out. He said, mama, I had to give. He said, mama, I thought about the time when daddy died. He said, mama, we didn't know how we were going to make it. But some way and somehow, we managed to keep all that we have. He said, mama... I remember the time when you needed your medication and we didn't have no money. He said, Mama, but the pharmacist gave you your medicine. He said, Mama, I remember the time when we didn't have no food. He said, Mama, and God sent somebody by and we had all that we could eat. He said, Mama, when I thought about how good God had been to us, I had to give all that I had. Praise God. And, 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 and so the boy said, Mama, again, I, I just had to give it all. I had to give it all, but Mama, wait a minute. On the ride home, Mayor Culberson gave me a ride home. And he asked me about what kind of grades did I have. And I told him I was on the AB honor roll. And Mama, what he did was, he reached in his pocket and he gave me a $100 bill. Mama, I'm trying to tell you, you can't be God-given. 
no matter how you try. The more you give, the more he will. I, I got to say one more thing. When the Lord delivered Isaac, he looked in the bushes. He said, there's a ram in the thicket. And they named that place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. Is there anybody here that knows he will provide? Is there anybody here who knows he's able to supply all your needs? Can I make one more observation? When you look in the text, what I like about God is what the Lord did not do to Abraham, he did it to himself. What you mean? Well, Abraham on Mount Moriah was able to bring his son back home. But God on Mount Calvary did not bring his son back home. He died. Didn't Jesus die? But, but, but he did not stay there. Can somebody, can anybody, can everybody help me say, Early! 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 Early Sunday morning, Jesus rose so we could have the right to the tree of life. Come on, Pastor. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the message and the messenger another hand. You know, we, we're living in this age where it's time out for preaching, for dead preaching about a living Savior. If we believe and know what we're talking about, it ought to show up in how we say it. And when you know you can't be God-giving, you know, this brother may not want me to say this about him, but let me tell you something. There are a few people in life I know that give like the DeLones. When you, when you give from what God gives to you, believing God is the reason why you have what you have. I'm telling you, God will begin showing up in your life in a different way. This brother has taught me how to give. God wants nothing but our best. But see, the best that he wants from me is different than the best he wants from you and whatever, numerically. My best is X. Your best may is Y. God wants us to give as he has given us. And I'm not talking about material things only. Let me be very clear and say that. He wants the best of your service. He wants the best of your worship, the best of your praise. He want the best. Let's give the message and the messenger another hand. Praise God for it. The doors of the church are now open with our ministers, our deacons, faith counselors. Please join me. Is there one in the house today who do not know Jesus the Christ as their Lord and their Savior? Is there one in the house today? This is a day, a good day, to say, yes, Lord. Because I don't care who you are. At some point in time, after God give you so many opportunities to say yay, it'll be your last time to say yay. Then he'll call you home and there's only two places that we go. We'll wake up in that great white throne judgment and be sent to the lake of fire by rejecting Jesus as Lord and Savior. Or we'll hear servant well done and we'll be with the Lord. I think the, the choice is clear. Is there one in the house today? 
who want to settle it and say yes to the Lord today. Is there one in the house today that's searching for a church home? Is there one that desires to be a part of a church where this is the centerpiece and the cornerstone of all we do? Then you're in the right place. Doors of the church are open. Is there one in the house who may know the Lord, but have not been baptized? Baptism does not save you, but what baptism does is show you are obedient to God following Jesus in baptism. You're making an outward expression of a inward transformation. Is there one in the house today? Is there one that want to say yes? Prayer warriors, keep on praying.